I was fine. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Jack. Hi. Uh, check out this wicked above 595 competition. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to explain to you what the automatic above 595 competition is like. There are so many manuals on the market at the moment, uh, but automatics, there's hardly any. Uh, when I was looking, there was what six or seven automatics, but there were like two, three hundred manuals. So there are so many more manuals, uh, and you never see them. You never see them on YouTube. Uh, I tried to look at what the automatics like, try and get a feel of, of what people think of them and I couldn't find anything so um, it's about time you did. Guys before we do jump in uh, I just want to ask you to please 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 subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I've got an Instagram so just check it out below uh, on the screen it'll pop up somewhere now but please subscribe to my YouTube channel because it's really important to me I'm trying to get more involved with cars and I think YouTube's a perfect way to do it but um, anyway let's jump in. It was all based around the automatic gearbox, so let's have a look. I'm just going to swap you around so you can have a look at the actual gearbox itself. So, this is a five speed automatic coupled to a 1.4 litre, 180 brake horsepower engine. And this baby helps you propel to 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds, which I think is slower than the manual, but that kind of sums up this video to be honest. And so, to explain to you how these buttons work, because Probably you've not really seen this kind of layout before. Let me show you. So you've got neutral. Now, if you press that, neutral, it comes up on the, in the middle of the display. I've no idea why you would use neutral ever, but um, it's on there, so you can have a little play with that one. You've got AM, A slash M, which is automatic slash manual, I think. What that does, if you press it, and in the middle it says auto, that means that the car will change itself. If you press it though, and it goes to manual, or doesn't say automatic, it just says the number one in the middle, then you'll be in manual, so you have to use the paddles to change the gears. You've got number one, which actually you need to select the gear you want to go in, which, which sounds silly, but, so maybe sometimes, I don't really know how it works, but you start the car, you start the engine, then you press AM, AM, whatever it is, and you go to automatic, but it says N, doesn't say one. Sometimes you have to press one, so it goes into first gear, so then you can pull away. Uh, and the last one, reverse, which is basically pretty simple, it's just reverse. So that really simply shows you how this automatic works. Sounds good, right? It may sound good, but let's go for a drive and I'll explain a little bit more about how it actually works. But yeah, why is this little gearbox not quite what I thought it was? Well, if you've driven a normal, modern automatic gearbox nowadays, just a single clutch, nothing fancy, you will realise how much they've progressed over the last 10 or 15 years. They are so good now. Where they were sloppy, slow to change, they would choose whatever gear they wanted to at whatever time, now they're really responsive, they're really quick, and they're really easy to use. So when I first got in this car and first took it for a drive, and it was like those cars from 10, 15 years ago, it was a huge shock. For cars only three years old, for a manufacturer that is making some really good cars, the Alpha 4C, for example, has the same layout gearbox, as it were, than this car. And yet it's changing like that, and it's amazing to see that that technology hasn't made its way to this car yet. And so for a three-year-old car, it's really, really interesting to see that this, this gearbox is nowhere where it should be. So I just, um, I just pulled over because I want to show you this gearbox. Now I'm gonna put it into reverse, right? Now I'm gonna take my foot off the brake, look what happens. Just starts to roll forward so what you should do is have the handbrake on and then 
balance it like you would a manual and then go backwards. But, now if I take my foot off the accelerator to put it back on, look at the jerkiness. It's, you've got to be so, so gentle with the throttle in order to do that. Then I'll change the first. Now obviously I'm going downhill, so, now, why I wanted to pull over as well is I wanted to show you just how jerky this gearbox is. Now, let me just put it into sport. And I'm not going to change with the paddles, I'm just going to let the car change. But look how jerky this is. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's quick. Can you hear how long it's taking to change gear? So it's not too easy. Let me put it back into normal mode and see if it changes a bit more normal. Oh. So I'm breaking down. When is it going to change? When's it going to change? When's it going to change? Not going to change? And then look. It does make a farty little pop sound. I, I like farty little pop sounds. That's quite fun. So I do like that. But um, because it's only a five speed, it's quite a small engine. It's quite a small car. And it really, I think it really deserves a manual. It doesn't deserve an automatic. Um, I thought it would be quite easy to use. I thought it would be perfect on the motorway. However, when you are getting to the motorway or when you are just doing kind of a bit of fun driving like I am today, then the automatic gearbox just doesn't do what you want it to do. Now again, I'll go back to the kind of modern competition of today. It's just like an Audi, because I've, I've driven a TT recently. You'll see the video. I'll put a little link in the description below. Um, the TT S-Tronic gearbox, not a double clutch, a single clutch gearbox, is so quick and so responsive that it makes this car seem so old and outdated. Now, I don't know whether the technology for Fiat came out to make this automatic gearbox and put it in this car, but I know that the S-Tronic gearbox and the TTs have been out for a long time. So if I took an S-Tronic gearbox from 2060, it would still be very similar to what they do today, and it is fantastic. It is so quick, you wouldn't even know it's a single clutch. So it really just highlights to me, the, the, the gearbox, I, I, I almost lost for words. You know, you need to drive this car. If you want to buy a, an automatic, a bath, you need to take it out on the road and drive it and see what it's like to live with because honestly I think that will really be the decide of what you do. Ah, oh, there's a car I'm going to pull out now. Come on, change! Oh my god. Uh, oh, the blinkers are going on. Oh lord. I think I broke a bit too hard there. <laughs> So you would have seen that there are paddles on the back of the steering wheel. So does that make it any better? Well, let's have a look. I'm going to, I'm going to stop. Ooh, don't go around the corner. I'm going to put it into manual, and then I'm going to go just the paddles alone. Let's see how we get up. Mm, does it make it better? No. But I do get to choose when I change down. I'm into this corner. I'm in the gear I want. Come on, change! Oh my god. I'm actually preempting the corner and preempting the gear I want to change. I'm like a double clutch gearbox. I'm I'm my own double clutch gearbox. I'm choosing, I'm preempting where I want to be and making sure that I'm ready to change. It's it's fascinating stuff, this car. Honestly. So you're probably gonna ask. Is it all bad? And no, it's not all bad. It's easy to drive on the motorway. Uh, it, it's quite a useful car. It's on these kind of back roads, these fun little trips you want to do, where it does kind of fall up. However, I don't have a fix, but I have a workaround on how you may be able to work it a little bit better. Number one, put it in sport. In sport, yes, it stiffens up the suspension maybe, or makes you feel a little bit taut. Uh, more torque, should I say. The steering wheel is heavier, the throttle response is more jerky. Um, however, it means that the gearbox changed a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna pull over here. Get the old beats around. There we go. Into reverse. Reverse. Oh, God Christ. Right, I'm gonna go automatic. 
if I keep forgetting to change. Right, I'm gonna, right, I'm in sport, I'm gonna change the paddles, but you should hear a little tactic that make it a little bit quicker. So, what are my other two? Well, number one, put it in sport. Number two, take your foot off the accelerator when you go to change gear. Don't do it a second before you change gear. As you change gear, take your foot off the accelerator and it just takes that strain off the engine so it changes quickly. Number three, imagine you're driving a manual. Now that sounds absolutely ridiculous. You're probably gonna shout abuse at me. If you do, please do it in the comments below. But, Drive like a manual. How on earth can you drive an automatic like a manual? Well, imagine you've got a clutch. Keep your foot where the clutch would be. I'll slow down. Keep changing. So, when you're accelerating, put your foot down. Clutch in, change. Can you hear it? It's a lot quicker than it was if you were just to leave it. Oh, I'm going to die. Ah! That was fine. If you don't do that, you can see how much I'm jerking forward. Yeah, that is the gearbox. I think it's taking all that little power. It's saying, come on, come on, go, go, go. And the gearbox is obviously thinking, well, I don't know what's going on. And then it changes, and it's, it's just a big kerfuffle. So actually, you know, that kind of stuff is really quite interesting. But those are the three things. Imagine you're in a manual gearbox. Take your foot off the accelerator when you're changing gear. Put it in sport. It's not a fix, but it definitely helps a lot when you're driving it. Yes, there are downsides. Number one, if you do that all the time in sport, you are gonna run out of petrol very quickly. I've actually already, it now says zero fuel left on my gauge. So I have basically run out of fuel. Uh, number two, it does mean that if you're not pinning it, if you're not pinning it into everything, then actually it does make a bit of a weird sound and it does mean that you're going to be going all the time which is not that safe for if you've got people in the car. So, uh, yeah. Turn around. Well, yes, I have found a workaround, but it's not good on fuel. It's not great to drive like it everywhere. And you look like a bit of a prat if you're doing those kind of changes in town. Uh, also, it doesn't live up to the rivals. The rivals of Audi, Mercedes, BMW, uh, actually, they scrap all those kind of brands. Um, Ford, Vauxhall. They have developed really good automatic gearboxes. A single clutch, standard boxes on small cars, and they work really well. So there is no excuse, especially when the Alpha 4C has such a good gearbox. As a quick change, you wouldn't be worried about it at all. You wouldn't be having this problem. For, so for that, I don't think this gearbox is good enough. So my verdict, if you're gonna buy an, a Bath 595 Competizione, buy a manual. Save yourself the trouble, don't have this problem, Go and buy a manual and just enjoy it. Enjoy the nuts out of it, because it's a fun little car, it's great. You know, everything about it is fun, it's, it's characterful, it sounds great, I think it looks brilliant. I just think a manual would just be perfect. It would just really would suit this car. Well, that's it. I hope it's been insightful to see what the automatic 595 competition is like. Um, you've seen in the video, it's it's a weird one. You definitely need to drive it. If you're gonna buy a, a automatic 595, please test drive it before you drive it to make sure you're happy with it. Um, but I stick by it. I'd probably choose the manual if I were to choose it again. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, it'd be really good if you can watch the future videos that come out. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to like it if you have, and comment what you like below. Uh, also, tell me what you think about this automatic gearbox. But um, for now, I'll see you soon. I've got the time.